তো কুমা আমি স্টার্ট করিম 4 মিনিটস মান আছে 4 মিনিট 3 মিনিট মান আছে সাগে হয় স্যার হয় স্যার আইছে অলরেডি বিসি স্যার আইছে হ্যাঁ আই দেখি স্যার আমি স্টার্ট করব পড়ো সাকে শর্মা স্যার স্যার ভিজুয়াল কিবা তো প্রবলেম এটা হইছে অডিও স্যার আকু মোবাইলে বা কানেক্ট করতে ট্রাই করি আছে স্যার মানে ভিজি স্যার হ্যাঁ স্যার আচ্ছা ঠিক আছে আমি লবলে রই দিছি Uh, a very good evening to uh, our distinguished uh, speaker uh, all our uh, eminent guests and uh, participants who are uh, with us attending this program online as well as watching it live and uh, my esteemed colleagues uh, i am dr sukmaya lama from the department of history uh, krishna kanta handic state open university and on behalf of surya kumar bhuya school of social sciences i would like to welcome you all for this special lecture uh, i would now uh, like to request our honorable vice chancellor uh, professor nn sharma sir to give his inaugural uh, speech <clears throat> thank you thank you dr sukhmaya lama distinguished speaker for this special lecture professor Sandan Kumar Sharma 
head of the department of the Department of History in the Burgar University. And the lecture is scheduled on Kukal Kumar and Quit India Movement in Assam. And in this lecture, we are having the participation of the distinguished colleagues from Hujja Kumar Bhuya School of Social Sciences, Professor Joydeep Burwa and others. All other colleagues in the university, these are scholars and their uh, friends. This is indeed a pleasure that the university has been organizing a number of uh, lectures, and this is a part of that. And this is also in partial fulfillment of the Azadika Amrit Mohotsav as per the mandate given by UGC as well as the government of India. And uh, we are having some more lectures being organized on some other figures like say Konaklota or like that. Today's lecture is a significant one in the sense that <clears throat> uh, Kukhal Kumar in Quit India Movement 1942 and the kind of ideologies that he had and could be the, the circumstances with which he had to succumb to. Uh, there are a lot of historical uh, implications and to discuss all those aspects, most especially because the entire independence movement in 1942, that Quit India movement, the decisive phase of the movement, and in Assam also, uh, the participation led by Gukhal Kumar and the dilemma between the violence and the non-violence, those schools and uh, lots of historical implications are there. And we are eagerly looking forward to the <clears throat> timely discourse by Professor Sundan Kumar Horma on this pertinent topic. And definitely we'll get some insights to understand the uh, historical phases of Quit India movement, most especially the circumstances as well as the contribution of Kukhal Kaur. With these few words, I just look forward and welcome you all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I would now like to request Professor Jaydeep Barua, uh, Director of Suja Kumar Bhunya School of Social Sciences, to kindly introduce our speaker for today's lecture. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir. Uh, the distinguished speaker for this evening, uh, Sandran Sharma from Dibuga University, and the distinguished participants and colleagues. Uh, it is an honor and privilege for uh, the university as well as for our school that we have uh, Chandan Sharma from Dibrugo University to speak to us on a theme which is titled as Kuhol Kuor and the Quit India Movement in Assam. Uh, as the Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir has already mentioned that this lecture is a, is a part of a, a series of lectures that we uh, plan to have. Uh, in fact, this is the first one to celebrate Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav. And I think that uh, this is a okay, this is an occasion to, to re-look or re-examine some of the received ideas and notions of history. And uh, that is what precisely we would like to have in this uh, session as well. Uh, really looking the figures like Kukhal Kumar and also trying to figure out how they can be located in the larger landscape of the India's struggle for freedom. Uh, uh, importantly, uh, uh, Sandan Sarma uh, is in the Department of History, uh, Dibrugo University. Uh, he has a long uh, years of experience of teaching um, in the university and before that also in colleges and I do, uh, university. Um, he, uh, very recently, he, uh, you know, he was in the charge of Department of History's uh, head of head uh, very recently, that uh, period is over. So he, we can uh, say that he is a former head of the Department of History, Dibuga University. Uh, but uh, his interest includes the modern uh, history of Assam, socio-economic and political history of Assam, and also environmental history. And in particular, his uh, research interest is about uh, the census and history and politics of census, how census played a measured and decisive role in in formulation of a lot of uh, questions which we confront today. Uh, without taking much time, I uh, it's a pleasure inviting Sandan Sarma to this uh, lecture. 
and then deliver his uh, the special lecture on the theme. Thank you very much. Yes, Sananda. Yeah. Uh, at the outset, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, Krishna Kanto Khandikoy, State Open University, my friend Joydeep Borua, Pranjit Bora, and others who have joined me on this occasion. At the outset, I would like to pay my homage on this particular death anniversary of Kukhal Kumar. It is also an occasion to understand the background, the context, the historiographical debates relating to the quit in the movement, as it is being said by our Vice Chancellor Sir, that that had been the most decisive moment in the context of Indian freedom struggle. When you try to understand the important figures who sacrificed their lives on this great journey of Indian independence movement, these are also occasions to understand the bigger historical context, the changing national, regional, as well as international dynamics which more or less determined the courses and consequences of India's long freedom struggle. As I start my lecture on this particular topic, Kukhal Kaur and freedom movement in Assam, obviously as part of a lecture of Azadika Amrit Mahotsav, 75 years of celebrating India's independence, I will start it with the historical context of 1942 quit in the movement in India, how it was so important and so decisive, and how it was shifting the course and the nature of the whole popular movement, and how it was so important, and how it could encompass every nook and corner in such a decisive way that historian Francis Hutchins in his work published by Harvard University Press in 1973, that particular book was titled as India's Revolution, Gandhi and the Quit India Movement. So since that time onwards, 1970s, that the Quit India Movement was perceived by some historians as India's revolution. And it was really revolutionary because the way it could touch different sections of Indian people and the magnitude of that upheaval, which was so important and which was compared with the events of 1857 the Great Revolt of 1857, which really shook the foundation of the British East India Company. After that, I will try to contextualize the developments in Assam in 1942, and specifically in the context of the Second World War, because Assam and Northeast India had strategic, geostrategic importance in view of the changes which was happening due to the coming of Japan till our borders. And some of the areas of Northeast India, like in Manipur and Nagaland, they also witnessed some of these historic happenings in terms of the Second World War, and specifically the coming of the Indian National Army under the leadership of Subhas Chandra Bose. And then I will come towards that, the sacrifice of Kukhal Kumar. So we can say 
it has three dimensions. First, I will come from Indian context, then we'll come to Assam, and then we'll come to Gulaghat and the specific context of Kukhol Kaur and his sacrifice. Because as I said, that these are great opportunities to reevaluate, to revisit the great sacrifices of our heroes, martyrs, and at the same time, the context and the connected history of Indian freedom struggle, which cannot be told if we don't try to put it in an all India frame. Having said that, as I, as I, as I started my lecture with the name of the book, India's Revolution, Gandhi and the Quit India Movement, which was published in 1973. Now that particular book, as I mentioned, it is so important because it termed it as India's revolution. It said that in this particular moment in 1942, Gandhi climaxed a lifetime of struggle with British imperialism in a totally unexpected way. Till now, he was the votary of a controlled non-violent struggle which he presided over till now, till 1942. But in 1942, he was leading some kind of a chaotic violent movement at a critical period of Second World War when Japanese troops stood poised for an invasion of the Indian soil. The fact that at this crucial moment, Gandhi sanctioned a violent uprising must be taken into account in any assessment of his total strategy of revolutionary action. And in a new book by Francis Hutchins, which was published just three years back in 2018, the book is Gandhi's Battlefield Choice, the Mahatma, the Bhagavad Gita, and the Second World War. In this particular new book, he tries to reconnect Gandhi's rereading of the Gita and how his reading of Gita was changing since early part of the 20th century and specifically in the context of the quit in the movement when he reasserted and took a very belligerent position regarding do or die and asked the British to quit India, which really severed the whole foundation, the whole logic, and the whole legitimacy of the British colonial administration in India. But in global diplomatic history, the process of decolonization of Asia specifically, it was explained in terms of the consequence of the Second World War. Mostly military historians, they suggested that because of the coming of the Japanese conquest in 1941-42, in which British military suffered hugely, that was the foundation, that was the backdrop for which there was the process of decolonization. So the context of decolonization in certain writings, it was explained not as something which happened due to internal forces, internal hours and movement of the people within these colonized countries, but rather some of the historians try to explain it as some kind of a result which happened because of the coming of two contradictory forces on British colonialism and other as a counter force of the coming of the Japanese army in 1991-1942. Of course, it had its repercussions. But if this particular change context is given, the most important platform, then the contradictions, the importance of the movements, the importance of the revolutions which happened within the Asian countries in the 40s, that gets a little bit neglected. So Hutchins, in his 1973 book, he said, in reality, the British withdrawal was the result of pressure exerted from within India. Following the war, the French returned to Indochina, the Dutch to Indonesia, and the British to Malaya, Singapore, and Burma. The British sought sufficient will 
in re repressing a guerrilla insurgency in Malaya that was limited to one section of the population. The imperial regimes were forced out of Indochina, Indonesia, Burma, and India because local pressures had become uncontrollable. What happened after the war was a result of what Asians had experienced during the war, not of what Europeans had lost by the war. This is very interesting. He decisively he said, what happened after the war, that means the whole process of decolonization was the result of what Asians had experienced during the war, not of what Europeans had lost by the war. So not because of Europeans lost, because of that decolonization happened, but he said, no, it is because of what happened as a result of what Asians experienced during the war that basically decided the whole course of decolonization. Now the point is, recently there was a very important book. He is a, a British a Marxist uh, historian, Perry Anderson. He had a, in 2012, he had written one book, The Indian Ideology. That Indian ideology book was basically a, a virulent attack on Gandhi, Nehru, and what was termed as an Indian ideology of the Indian National Congress. And in that particular book, he says that the first reason for independence was the expanded system of electoral representation put into effect by British in 1937. And the second explanation of India's independence is even striking. It was for him, the hammer blow from outside in the form of Japanese assault on Southeast Asia. And because of which ultimately the British had to succumb to the Japanese pressure. And because of this, India got independence. So that means India got independence, not because of the people's pressure, people's continuous movements, revolutions, Indian National Congress, popular pressure, subaltern movements, but India got independence according to him because of the Japanese pressure. So here again, that whole negating the whole, the movement, the whole revolution, that is again on the agenda. And it happens by one of the leading celebrated Marxist historians of England. And by criticizing him, Pata Chatterjee has said, Pata Chatterjee, Niberita Menon and Suripta Kobiras, they had written a counter attack, a counter criticism of this particular book by Perry Anderson. And Patasatiji has said, regarding the explanations of Perry Anderson, he has said, I'm quoting Patasatiji, this is an explanation one might have expected from a Tory military historian that it comes from one of the more foremost Marxist historian of our time will remain a matter of lasting same. It was a Manakuma military history of Hale Belekota Asin. Kendra is a Marxist pondidor for how to any colleague, it is a lasting same. At Donor at Lodjazana could days have a polygon to Hobo. Jeno Kyo, one very interesting point that in 1942, after the quit in the resolution, when the whole top brass of Indian National Congress were being arrested and they were put behind the bars. Not only the top brass, all India leaders like Gandhi, Nehru, and others, even provincial leaders, everyone as well put behind the bars. And at that point of time, the Secretary of State of India, L.S. Amri, he made a series of statements to the BBC and the American public. Now, what Amri had suggested is very interesting. Why it, is very why, why it is very interesting, because he suggested that Indian National Congress will be doing some very subversive activities. Subversive activities, he say, say, say it. The Congress leaders, Amri contended, had planned to unleash an orgy of senseless destruction of public property, cutting telegraph and telephone lines, uprooting rail lines, and looting and burning post offices and banks. Now, interestingly, Exactly this has happened after Amri has said it. It is some kind of a, that this was some kind of a template which was said by Amri and later on it was followed in terms of the popular protest in different nooks and corners of India. 
Now, K. Z. Masruwala, he succeeded Madhav Desai as the editor of Horizon after Gandhi was arrested. And K. Z. Masruwala, he had said in his editorial just after the arrest of Gandhi in 1942, he said, this location of trans traffic communications is permissible in a non-violent manner without endangering life, cutting wires, removing rails, destroying small bridges cannot be objected to in a struggle like this, provided ample precautions are taken to safeguard life. The nonviolent revolutions have to regard the British power in the same way as they would the Axis power and carry out the same measures. So certain things were being legitimized. And exactly because of this, uh, Hutchins, in his new book, he said that there was a rereading of Gita by Gandhi, because according to Gandhi, Gita was some kind of a text which provided justification for nonviolent movements. But even with him, things were changing in 1940s. And when you read that particular book, we can under, understand the changing context in 1941 and 1942. Now, interestingly, uh, there were lots of underground leaflets in the name of Indian National Congress. And most of these leaflets, they sounded like Amri's lecture. And why I said Amri's lecture was interesting? Because he first told what the Congress was contemplating. And in, interestingly, what the volunteers did at the local level, without formal permission of the Congress leaders, lots of subversive activities. Now, lots of leaflets came out in different parts of India. Even such kinds of leaflets also came out in Assam. And that's why I said it's a connected history. If you don't un understand what was happening at the All India level, we can't understand the spontaneous protest and the kind of subversive activities which was happening in different districts, Kamrup, Borpeta, Dorong, Nogaon, Gulaghat. All this can be understood because these are the same templates which was happening in different parts of UP, Bihar, Maharashtra. So uh, one set of instructions in leaflets, it's read, declare yourself free men and your village a free village. It happened in some areas of Assam. It happened in some areas of Borpeta. People declared themselves to be free. Some kind of a liberated zone, Gandhian liberated zone. Establish a panchayat in your village. The panchayat will be your government. So panchayat will be collecting taxes. And exactly this was being done in some villages in, in Borpeta. Wherever you are well organized, take peaceful possession of the thanas, courts, other government buildings in your area. This was happening in different parts of Dorong. This was happening in different parts of Borpeta. This was happening in different parts of Nogao and Gulagat. So those who resist your possession should be confined to suitable places. They shall be in our prisoners and should be properly housed and properly fed. Disorganize the communication whose sole use today is to suppress us. Take care of that you take or injure no life. So there was an instruction, injure no life, but go on doing subversive activities. So this was the popular mood in 1942. And exactly this happened in certain districts of Assam in 1942. Another circular warned against letting grains fall into the hands of the police, keep them where they cannot find them. So there was a popular understanding that grains should not be given to the police because there was wartime siphoning of uh, food materials. And that created lots of food scarcities leading to the infamous Kolkata famine in 1943. So in different parts of India, there was a campaign, give no grains to the police. And exactly this was also replicated in Borpeta. And in certain cases, the police, local police, they were Assamese police of, of officers. And they said to the Congress volu volu volunteers that what do you think you will get independence if we remain famished? I mean, Bukot Thakile, then you go lab, hobo jano. But at that time, Bajanath Kharma said, plus you resign from your police service, join us, and then you will be properly fed by us. The, the public will take care of you. So that was the some kind of public mood in 1942. And that's why Hatsing has properly said it was really a revolution. It was not the same kind of a sentiment 
an orderly discipline movement as Gandhi urged prior to 1942. But after 1942, Gandhi's death call, do or die, and do or die fascinated the lower ranks in different parts of India. Uh, PAD landlord who is with you, just enough rent to maintain himself and his family. Pay nothing to the landlord who is an ally of the government. Do not keep paper money with you. It is a fraud. Soon it will lose its value and buy nothing. Then another said, the credit of British government has almost disappeared in India as gold and silver have taken to England and there is shortage of copper coins as well. So these were some of the, some, some, some of the popular reflects which came out at that point of time. And the uprising was so great that long Lord Linlitgo himself termed 1942 insurrection as he said, by far the most serious rebellion since that of 1857. Lord Linlitgo himself said that 1942 was much worse than 1857. Now, Hutchins, he has, uh, he has compared 1857 and 1942, and he said, uh, the rebellion of 1857 and the 1942 Quit India Rebellion are in fact curiously comparable in a number of respects. Both eradicated British authority in large areas of country and both were most intense in many of the same areas of Northern India. Yet these two outbursts of popular fury had opposite, res opposite results. The first led to an even firmer imposition of the British, British authority in 1857. It strengthened the British authority, but in but, uh, but in 1942, it ended the British rule. In 1857, the rebels were left demoralized and the British emerged more determined than ever. In 1942, the military, the military invulnerable British view ever more demoralized as the dispersed rebels became ever more res resolute. Then in contrast, the 1942 uprising left the British Indian government depressingly aware that even the presence of vast numbers of British, American, and Australian soldiers could not secure the reestablishment of the British rule on a solid footing. In Assam, 1942, because of the Second World War, it became uh, a, a hub of uh, the Allied troops and lots of foreign troops, specifically from America and other, other countries. They came to this particular part because there had to be uh, wartime sanctions had to be uh, paratrooped. Uh, airdropped to China. And exactly Lidu and this particular part, Dibrugar, Lidu, Sabua, Dinjan Airport, these became very important areas at that point of time. Now, uh, because of these particular changes, uh, we see that things were gradually uh, becoming very, dif very difficult in 1942 for the British to con control. Another very important part was the, 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 as the people fled from Northeast in India. We know lots of people fled from Burma in 1942 as Burma was occupied by the Japanese, force, Japanese forces. Then lots of people, even from Assam specifically, uh, Indian pe people, they also fled from this particular area. And specifically those who, uh, the army, pe army people, those who suffered. And this created a very depressing kind of situation for the British. Uh, the ship secretary report in 1942, it said, there is no improvement to report in the general public feeling. Defeatism and anti-British feeling encouraged by enemy broadcast and by objectionable speeches are still pronounced. The unfavorable impression caused by passage of trains through North Bihar containing sick and wounded from Burma front is now likely to be strengthened by the unexpected return of labor, which had only recently been recruited for military routes in Assam. These laborers are returning in many cases with scores on their feet in a condition which showed that they have not been well cared for uh, in, the, in the journey. And on their return, the tale is spreading that many of them are victims of the Japanese air raids in Assam. Two incidents that have been reported during the fortnight illustrate the people's reluctance to go anywhere near the war zone and their continued fear at the proximity of the soldiers. So this was the general mood of the people and people thought as the uh, Japanese were adv advancing, so people thought that this is the end time of the, of, of the British even in India. And this led, led to the 
the acceleration of the different kinds of subversive activities, the people's movement at that partic particular uh, at that particular point of time. So what happened? And in an all India phenom all India phenomenon, there was uh, the destruction of the telegraph wires, telephones, electric power lines. It happened in different parts of India. It happened also in Assam. It happened in uh, in in Borpeta, in which uh, Bajana Sharma was directly associated. There was attacks on government buildings, police stations, and post offices. There was destruction of the railway stations and sabotaging railway line. Destruction of railway lines, it happened in different parts of India. And that also came to Assam. And unfortunately, in such a particular case, Kukhol Kaur was framed, though he was not directly associated in that particular event, which happened on the 10th October in 1942. I will come it at a later point of time. But destruction of railway properties, destruction of the railway lines, specifically to derail, derail the movement of wartime people, to derail movement of the military pe people, to derail the movement of wartime resources. That was one of the primary targets of the revolutionaries in 1942. Then, there were huge workers going on strike, disruption of road traffic by destroying bridges. So this was some kind of a general phenomenon across in India, and these same things also came to came uh, in different parts of Assam. Now, if when you try to uh, try to uh, contextualize uh, what have happened in Assam, that the political history of Assam it speaks in detail about. Uh, the hotels, the processions, the hostings of the Congress flag on government buildings, all of which hinged on the basic Gandhian tenet of non-violence. But gradually, this non-violent discipline movement, it was no longer there, and there was a continuation of subversive activities in different parts of Assam, and specifically in Kamrup, Nogaon, Dorop, Sipsagar, in chronological order. There was also, uh, the people were asked, uh, specifically to target the house of the Mozadars, the government leaders, military contractors, Mandals, and some government collaborators. And this was happening in different parts of India as it was being said in the leaflets. So this will follow even in, even in Assam. Uh, so we, we see that uh, in 1942, 26 August, there was a group of, pe group of people led by Bajanath Sharma uh, on the bank of the river Beki. There was a new military uh, aerodrome which was being built, a military station which was being built, uh, built and which was gutted, which was uh, torched, put to fire by those revolutionaries in 1942, in which uh, uh, Bajanath Sharma, he was directly associated. Uh, in his own memoirs, Bajanath Sharma, said about that particular event in Bornagar on the bank of the river Beki. Moi goi mul ghatir usar noi paonte uttar murat joli uthil obiram bande matram dhonire akak batah minayeto kori digantale prakampita koi tulile. Muhutate dokhin muratu anurup bande matram dhonire lago lage akak bheji zui joli uthil. Thikadar mahori kuli bonwa dukani bure maileo maileo buli siyarat gagan kopi uthil. Thik tene koi? Zihokole, a Havia dosto de Kipuanai, Teluke Colpano Colbon Waribo, Bekinor Paroke, Picon Disso, Ken a Mormantic Huipurisil. Daparot, Kurukator, Moharano, Disobi, Bagdebe of Kito Kuitagose, Tat Logotulona no Coilo, Ami, Colicolor Manueyak, Dito Kurukator Logot Obito Kuruparu, Akanto Manubilak or Picon Artonat, Akromon Kari Bonde Matron Doni, Ogni de Potter, Poloinasun, Aulaklak, Bam Potter, Gurum Gurum Hobdoj and Mohapolor, Agon in Gitoke. Bohon Korisil. So this was uh, the mood of the people uh, in Bornagar, in Borpeta, uh, in which uh, 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 Bajanath Khor -Khor Khorma, who was associated with the Kohinu Theater, he was directly, directly uh, associated at that point of time. Now, apart from this, this, this one, as I told that uh, gradually, uh, gradually uh, the Targeting of the railway lines 
there are also frequent incidents in Assam. In Kamloop district, a special train occupying troops was derailed on 24th November, 1942. Uh, it happened basic, basically near by Guwahati in Panbari station, uh, in which the driver and four other persons they succumbed. There were two other sabotage incidents between Patigaon and Gusaigaon in Lower, Lower Assam. The same thing also happened in between Jomna Mukh and Puruni Gudam on 24th and 25th August 1942. In Dorong uh, in district also, there were similar incidents. Now the same kind of incident happened in Sipsagar on 10th October in 1942 in a main line at Kakhzan near Titabar. Now, in this particular incident in Gulaghat, Khorupathar, Kukhal Kumar was arrested and he was falsely implicated and later on he was given capital punishment. But before I start to discuss about Gulaghat, but there were certain very important aspects about Golaghat. The Golaghat was always a very important place in which there were generations of Congress volunteers, communist volunteers. They started working from 1920s onwards continuously. Obviously, at that particular point of time, few important persons like uh, Biplobibir Hankar Borua, who was the most revolutionary pers person in this particular area, Gulahat Hyohagar area. He started working for the Congress in 1920s. In 1921 himself, he was arrested. Then he was sent to work in Gulaghat. He became a, a permanent resident of Gulag Gulaghat, started organizing the people, the villagers in and around Gulaghat, and he made a solid foundation of the Congress party in, in the larger Gulaghat area, area since 1930s. And at that particular point of time, Gulaghat was known for few important ashrams. Gandhi opened up ashrams in different parts of India. And on the line of Gandhian ashrams, there were few ashrams who were established in Gulaghat. And comparatively, such ashrams, Gandhian ashrams, in numbers, comparatively, it was much more higher in number in Gulaghat in comparison to other districts. And Bura Gumai Khat, Gulaghat or Kendri ashram, Bokotial, Hialekhati, Borkotoni, Nugura, Ahumgaon, Khenshua, Tokin Hengera, these were some of the very important, uh, very imp imp important uh, uh, Gandhian ashrams, which came up in the, 1930, in the 1930s. Uh, in 1924, the Buragwai Khat was est established with Kekhob Khonwal, and in 1930s, Khonkor uh, Borua, he was instrumental in establishing different such ashrams like Hilekhati, Bokotial, Hensua, etc. In this particular ashrams, Gandhian ashrams, there were some active Congress volunteers like Kehap Khunwal, Madhavi Khunwal, Hodreshwar Borua, Buddheshwar Borua, Mineram Thengal, Anoniram Borua, Darika Dah, Gere Sutia, Tilak Khunwal, Thogiram Bora. Now these different names of the people, it speaks how the common people came to be directly associated and became disciplined volunteers of the Congress party. And this is the background we have to understand the coming of Kukhol Kaur. Because Kukhol Kaur, he came to the Congress party in the 1930s. He became a Congress local Congress secretary in 1930, and he was a devout Gandhian. Now, he becoming a devout Gandhian, who was not only Gandhian, he also believed in Gita. He was more or less following 
the footsteps of footsteps of Mahatma Gandhi. And he never endorsed violent protest. And even in 1942, when there were subversive activities, Kukol Kuar was not directly associated with those subversive, subversive activities. But unfortunately, there was a context in which he got implicated, which led to the capital punishment given to him in 1943 on 15 June. Now, these particular ashrams, they basically, and with the Congress volunteers, they engaged in multiple kinds of a Gandhian constructive work. When you speak about Gandhian constructive work, Gandhian constructive work means popularization of khadi, abolition of untouchability, to work for the common pe people, to work against opium, Kani Biyudi Hongram, Auspice Sota Biyudi, anti caste movement. So these were some of the constructive programs which Gandhi popularized for since late 1920s and 1940s. And exactly these became the role model for these Congress workers at the local level. And obviously, Kukhol Kaur, being a very young leader at that point of time, and a devout follower of Gandhi, he also came to be associated with such organized constructive programs. Now, Gulaghat, Gandhi visited Gulaghat in 1934. 1934, Gandhi came to Assam for the third time. He came for the first time in 1921. Then he came in 1926. Third time he came in 1934. And in 1934, he came for the specific purpose of abolition of untouchability. That was an all India campaign. And as part of that all India campaigning, he also visited different parts of India, different parts of Assam. And along the Mahabutra Valley, he came to Jurhat, he came to Nogao, he came up to Dibrugar, and he also visited uh, Gulaghat at that particular point of time. And he popularized anti untouchability movement in Gulaghat at that particular point. So Gulaghat was emerging as a very important center of Gandhian movements, revolutionary movements. And since 1930s, left wing organizers, left wing organizers also came to be prominent in that particular locality. So uh, in 1931, when uh, Lord Arwin, he came to Jurhat, he was shown black flag by Shankar Borua, Bogai Bokhat Hoikia, Nandeshwar Gogoi, Thiren Dutta, Thiren Dutta came to be a communist leader later on, Horish Chandra Gogoi, Hogiram Pakoti, Thormeshwar Thagur, Hobaram Bora, Pontiram Hajorika, they basically had a protest journey with black flags from Gulaghat to Jurhat. Uh, so this was the this was the con context at that particular point of time. In 1942, uh, there was different kinds of Khanti Khana. Congress volunteers, they called it Khanti Khana. But later on, from those Khanti Khanas, there was also the formation of the death squads. And in Gulaghat in 1942, the War Council was formed in which uh, there were people from different parts of Upper Assam, they became as, as, associated. Gormur Khattradikar, Revert Pitambar Dabagoswami, he was also associated with team with, with it. He was also arrested in 1942. Then Hongkor was also one of the leaders of this particular group. So Hongkor Borborua, as, as said, he was the most pronounced revolutionary leader from this particular area. He joined underground and he organized underground activities at that particular point of time. And in this particular war council, lots of other people also joined, like Gondiram Gogoi, Hati Borua, Romakanta Gogoi, Apiram Gogoi, Hodahanda Gogoi, Rotneshwar Gogoi, Hodia Kalita, Kanram Gogoi, Bogai Hoikia, Jugananda Brahmasari, Thormeshwar Borua, Dimbeshwar Phukon, Kukhol Borua, Ramchandra Borua, Huneshwar Harma, etc. So, and in 1942, there were lots of subversive activities like putting on fire to the different clubs, as well as uh, the different symbols 
of the colonial government in 1942 in Gulag, in Gulag, in Gulaghat. And in Gulaghat, ultimately, in 1942, there was the railway subversive activity on 10th October 1942. And in that particular subversive activity in which a train was derailed, that was a military train which was derailed. And the police, after investigation, they arrested Kukhol Kuor, Hunaram Kuor, Modern Chandra Fukon, Kaliram Kuor, Bonkhidhar Kuor, Mazubite Kuor, Horenonat Khen, Birdon Chutia, Gunokanta Chutia, Dehiram Chutia, Kurjokanta Hoikia, Thonesha Gogoi, Mohendranath Chutia, Khonosham Hoikia, Puko Hoikia, Modern Dakh Panika, Gongadhar Ahom, Luhai Sandra Hoikia, Mahon Lahon, Gulab Hoikia, Seniram Gogoi, Podum Chup Agarwala, Nogen Sutia, Minai Sutia, Dimbesor Hoikia, Kekharam Gogoi, Podmoram Bora, Kuram Kuor, Oram Dak Kuor, Loboram Hajorika, Onagasor Kuor, Tulukiram Horma, Kamini Bora, Gunaram Bora, Sokora Nagmonki, Tupur Hoikia, Tromakanto Deka, Indesor Pukon, Seniram Hoikia, Hoda Hoikia, Tilog Bora, and Pulin Bihari Borua. And Pulin Bihari Borua later on became the government approver. And on whose testimony, ultimately, four persons were given capital punishment. And later on, after mercy petition, uh, three others were spared. And capital punishment for Kukhol Kor, it was, uh, it was uh, not stayed. And he was executed on 15 June 19. 43. Uh, now, when in 1943, when he was in jail, in 1943, when he was in uh, jail, we have an uh, uh, account from Karagaro city of Toibulla. Toibulla was the most important Congress leader at that particular point of time. He was also the president of the provincial Congress party. Uh, he has written in his Karagaro city, Jailot, Kukol Korokota. Ami Siodino Lo Hirobolo Lysu, Kukol Korok. Amar Kukonore, Eken Amore. Kunisain Hall, Kukol Korok, Pasir Hukum. Juamahar, Gulagator, Hulupotar, military, Tain Ruhotonor, Bukodomat. Kukor Kor, Artini, John Logoria, Asami, Pasir Hukum. Hukumo Dinafan Abeli, Jailot, Sarita, Nizan Kutar, Puiskar, Puri, Toise, Tuidai, A Sarizon or Karane. Tetia, ah. Provatot, Amaloke, Good Kalu, Hokolo, Ekote, Parthana Hobat, Sisi, Gormura, Gohadebe, Kole, Pagobat Gita, Pat, Hokorodin, Ali Ahmadia, Moy Kuran, Nam Kiton, Annan Hokolwe, Hekot, Ekote, Parthana, Kuhol Kor, Aru An, Tinizan or Poke, Apil the Kilkora Huse, Jail Apil, Polapol Hun College of Jonazabo, Ki Hoyakun, George Hose, Soyang Lil Nidgo, Adunik Sondi, Ahat Niraha, Nirahat Aha. Tarpisot, the Kete Likisil, uh, the Ketor, uh, uh, Sodozuntar, Sodozuntarik, nineteen forty three. Tetia Town, Kena Likisil, uh, Agdina Dinakon Ahisil, Hakatole Kukol Kor of Harja, Okoni Okoni Dutro Dutik Logotlui, Parja Kuholo Kusil, Ohom Honot Iman Luk Takote, Apuna Report of Hogoban Ragahu, Utro Dutik, Parja Akibat Koridile, Kukole Bidai. Tir Sitte, B Dorpe, Sohido Nirvoi Sahonire, Sahonire. Hohoras Bondi, Podhan Kejone, Unumoti Kome, Hakat Kuilego, Ukol Korok, Hote Nizan Kutat, Ukol Kore, Stil Habe Kosil, Pogaban Risa, Hazu Hosu Zabolo, Dui Mutu at a Klek Matro, Ukol Kor Niraporat, Ukolasil Mohotangandi Ohinkar Hadok, Hokto, Hormonisto, Hogobat Bissak, Osol Otol Hodai, Tong Sanyo Congress Homparakor, Babloi. Hake Congress or Office Korote. Potek din Gitapa Nokorako in Nizor Kotobo Kamat Bortinohoi. Actiso Lun Hotagho Dinorepora, Polisil Huntag, Lun the Huntag, Luntag, Lun the Hai Nirop Ozola Gaolia Congress Havok, Oti Kanto Prokuti, the Hakomiazon. Zulat Jelot, Hazoti Hoi Kebadin Asil. Kuhol Korea Hon Sicilikil Hokomi, Bokundon at Ponditole. Bokundo Asil Borpatarello, Dugotona Dipto. Bokunto knew Dectetia. 
পিছত ধরা পড়ি জেলত আসিল হাজতি হই কিন্তু মুকদমাত হয়েছিল খালাস লগে সিকিউরিটি প্রিজনার হিসেবে রাজবন্দী সেই চিঠি আছিল কুশল কোরর জমপুরীর খত কুশলে তর্ক করেছিল বকুন্দ পণ্ডিত আর আন আন সহকর্মীর সঙ্গে গান্ধীর অহিংসা নীতি মতে রেল লাইন তুলি রেলওয়ে ঘটুয়া রেলওয়ার ঘটনা ঘটুয়া ঘটুয়া আর মানু নাশ করা হব পারে কেন উলুটাই কোয়া হল যে দেশময় যি বিপ্লবর অগ্নি জ্বলি উঠেছে সেই বিপ্লবত ব্রিটিশর যুদ্ধ প্রতিষ্ঠা প্রতিরোধ করে কর্তব্য হরিজনত গান্ধী ভক্ত শ্রী মসৃী উলায়ু তো ব্রিটিশ রেল লাইন ধ্বংস করা দিয়া সপক্ষেই লিখিছে যে মানে আগতে কিন হরিজনের যখন নতুনক এডিটর হয়েছিল রেলওয়ে লাইন উঠাই দেওয়ার কথাও পোষকতা করেছিল তথাপি কুশল কোঁর অহিংসা পথত বর্তি থাকিল কিন্তু যদিও হিংসা যথা বরপথ রেল লগত কোঁরর সম্পর্ক লেখ পানো নাছিল প্রমাণের অভাবত সেই চিঠিখনকে মূল করে অন্যায় বিচারত দোষী সাব্যস্ত কোঁরক ব্রিটিশ আদালতে আর বাহাল রাখি ফাঁসির হুকুম তেতা লিখিছিল স্বাধীনতার মহাযজ্ঞ লাগে শহীদ রক্ত কুশল কোয়ে দিলে সেই রক্তর আহুতি হল মৃত্যুঞ্জয়ী শহীদ কুশল কোয়র জিন্দাবাদ গৌরব জিন্দাবাদ তারপর তো নাম ঘোষার একটা পঙ্ক্তি লিখেছিল তয়বুল্লাই চৈতন্য ঈশ্বর আদিত্য যাহার হিয়াত ভৈল প্রকাশ কালমেঘে প্রায় অবিদ্যা আন্ধার তাহারে হুয়ে বিনাশ নাম ঘোষাত তিনশো পঁচপন্ন পঙ্ক্তি হে আসিল চৈধ তার তারিখে চৈধ জুন তারিখে তয় তয় বুলদাই লিখা সেই সময় এই যে ঘটনা ঘটিছিল সেই ঘটনাটোর জাজমেন্ট দিছিল হামফ্রি হামফ্রি সাহাবে তার মূল কারণ আছিল যে তার মূল মূল কারণ আছিল যে সরু পথার যে ঠাই ঘটনাটা ঘটিছিল সে আসিল পার্সুয়ালি এক্সক্লুডেড এরিয়াত আর সেয়া কলকাতা হাইকোর্ট জাস্টিস জুরিসডিকশনের ভিতর নপরে সেই কারণে শিবসাগর ডিস্ট্রিক্ট মেজিস্ট্রেটে এই কেসট লোল আর যদি জাজমেন্ট সেই জাজমেন্টত কিন্তু যে মূলত কিন্তু কোনো ধরনের কোরেবরেটিভ এভিডেন্স নাই সেই জাজমেন্টর পর এটা অকমান কই দিছো দিয়ার ইজ নো গুড কোরেবরেশন অভার মেনি ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল একিউজ বিং প্রেজেন্ট এট দিস মিটিং এট দি কংগ্রেস অফিস দি এপ্রুভার সেইজ অল দি একিউজ ওয়ে ডিয়ার এন্ড দ্যাট অল ওয়েন টু রিমুভ দ্য রেল এক্সেপ্ট মোহন হু আজ দ্য একিউজ নাম্বার থার্টিন হু ইজ দি সুইট মিট মেকার লিভিং ইন এ রুম এডজনিং টু দ্য কংগ্রেস অফিস আইডেন্টিফাইজ কুশল কোয়র দেন হি সেইড দিয়ার ইজ অলসো সাম এভিডেন্স দ্যাট মাইট বি সেইড টু সাজেস্ট দ্যাট সাম ওয়ান ইউজিং দি কংগ্রেস অফিস ওয়াজ ইন্টারেস্টেড ইন সাপোটেজ দি দিস কনসিস্ট অফ এ রেলওয়ে মেপ এন্ড এ পেপার সেইড টু বি ইন কুশলস হেন্ড রাইটিং বাই দি এপ্রোভার দিস ইজ এক্সিবিট নাম্বার ফোর হুইচ সিমস টু বি পার্ট অফ দি লেটার টু পণ্ডিতজি আস্কিং হিম টু সেন্ড এ ম্যান ফর দি ওয়ার্ক or if the if he could come himself all will be glad on the other side there is a list of articles in another handwriting of tools which might be useful for sabotage it is not however suggested that they were brought to sorupathar it is not of course clear that work is referred to nor it can be said to be proved that kukhol wrote it then he also had written that there is no proof that kukhol wrote, wrote, wrote it but only because of the testimony of the approver ultimately uh, uh, he stated that accused number 2 uh, he stated that uh, on the other hand it is clear that there is a very strong corroboration for the story as a whole and 18 all our witnesses who appears to me to have come forward to tell the real truth there is no possible reason has suggested why they should make themselves unpopular with the congress minded people and then ultimately he ordered only the maximum sentences appear to be proper on the case of kukhol kor dharmakanta deka and konagashwar kor and thupor elias khanesham hokia and under section 19109 ipc i direct that they be hanged by the neck till they are dead so this was the 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 verdict on 6th march 1943 by ca humphrey he was the deputy commissioner of uh, deputy commissioner of uh, sipsagar and ultimately on 10th uh, he was hanged to death in jurhat jail 
uh, so this was the sacrifice of martyr the gandhian follower kukhol kumar as everyone has said that there was no proper evidence to implicate him he was given that particular death penalty only on the testimony of the government approver first he was an accused then later on due to lots of inducement he became a government government approver and the political history of assam uh, it has uh, edited by arun chandra bhuya and sibo poda they, they have said that kushol kumar was murdered for administrative convenience by flagrant disregard to justice and fair trial legal proceedings in this case became a farce the government used kushol kumar's case as an example to over o and terrorize the masses but the point is that though it was a some kind of a judicial murder by the colonial state but the sacrifice of kushol kumar and the host of all those revolutionary activities in 1942 which is duly been duly being uh, explained as uh, as the revolution by uh, francis hutchins so it was really the quit in the movement was the moment of india's revolution and his propel the way of indian independence in 1947 so here i basically as i told i touched these three aspects one particular aspect was the all india context then the assam context and how it transferred in golaghat and how kukhol kumar who was a local leader who was a devout gandhian without being directly related to this sabotage of the railway line which happened on 10th october 1942 he was given capital punishment we express our homage to this great martyr and as well the whole process of the revolution of 1942 which galvanized the support of the people all over india leading to india's independence i thank the organizers of krishna kanto handic universe open university for providing me the opportunity to join this august lecture series azadi ka amrit mahotsav i thank everyone for your present listening thank you thank you sandanda i mean the, this is an excellent uh, sort of academic engagement and uh, i just take one minute to to open the floor and then priti my colleague will join me in conducting the question and answer discussion session meanwhile i request all the participants to put their questions in the chat box so that that can be put to the speaker and he can respond so uh, basically two three things are very important uh, which i feel coming from this lecture one is that we know that lot of uh, you know activities which we call non violent kind were taken place in 1942 across the country and in assam so uh, in in a sense this is important to understand that these violent incidents and events are not isolated and sporadic cases uh rather these were part of larger landscape of the india struggle for freedom so that's the very important point probably the, the sandan the has actually highlighted and most importantly uh, we should also you know try to understand that uh, the landscape which itself was uh, changing radically from within so that's the i think these are the two very important point which uh, the chandanda has highlighted and we think we, we consider that this is really really uh, you know exciting to know and uh, so therefore it is important to uh, understand the specific context conditions circumstances 
uh, which has led to this kind of internal changing of the general landscape of freedom study. So that that has been you know highlighted, and uh, most importantly, to understand even the personal cases or local incidents, how this broad picture is important. So that is uh, been highlighted in the lecture. So but I uh, would like to request all the participants and uh, the audience to to interact with the speaker. Probably we have some 20, 25 minutes time. Uh, and then I, I, I just, uh, you know, to set the ball rolling, I would like to, you know, put uh, opening uh, sort of question uh, to Sandanda, for instance. Um, the one is, of course, the sacrifice of Kuhol Kaur is, uh, is beyond any doubt because he was not uh, into the incident, but he accepted the, the sort of punishment and probably he thought that this is his kind of contribution to the India's freedom study. So that's 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 that part is uh, well understood. And the last part, you have uh, made a comment that uh, probably uh, this case was taken as an alibi by the British government to sort of a put a demonstration effect that if you continue with this kind of activities, then we can you know that this similar kind of uh, sort of punishment can be meted out against you as well. So the what were the follow up, for instance, suppose after Kuhal Kumar's case. So what was the kind of the, the implication? Was it that it, con it could contain the kind of series of uh, things that were unleashing during 1940s, uh, Quit India movement? Or was it the case? Or actually, it, it was just opposite, that it actually you know, further intensified the struggle and then finally, probably, the, it was against what British could have uh, contemplated. So the, even though the British thought that this was this will be used as a demonstration effect, uh, you know, sort of case, but uh, what was the follow-up kind of thing? How it was uh, taken by the people? What was the implication on freedom movement uh, post Kuhal Kwas? Uh, not only in Assam, all over India, the implications of the Quit India movement was that the British knew it was nearly impossible to continue as they thought prior to the war. Just prior to the war, Gandhi told them that give us some kind of an assurance that complete independence will be given to us. And if that is being given, then we are ready to support you in this particular war. But when the British government was not ready to give a, any clear answer about giving India total independence, then Gandhiji said that, okay, we are not supporters of Nazism or fascism. At the same time, we are also tired by colonialism of British. So by 1942, he said that we don't try to differentiate in between the three. And the basic point is that by 1942, and because of all the subversive activities and the amount of popular support that it generated, it basically permanently destabilized the colonial rule. And after 1943, it was no longer possible to do the business as usual prior, as it happened prior to 1942. So it was a permanent rupture. So there was no going back. And exactly after 1944-45, we see that it led to the series of negotiations, cabinet mission and all these things. And those series of negotiations more or less clearly uh, they, they, they more or less accepted that it was only time to be determined for declaration of independence. But of course, there was a tremendous failure on the part of the colonial government because they could not stop the amount of violence that came up in 1947. It could have been more planned. It could have been more orderly. So that was the greatest failure of the colonial government in 1947. Okay, so uh, Preeti can uh, take the questions and then continue here from. You unmute yourself. Yeah. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 
I think I'm sorry, already. Uh, yes. Yeah. Some yes. Some observations and questions are already there, so you can go ahead. Okay. Well, uh, we have a uh, one observation from uh, Pranjit Bora sir. Uh, sir, you have beautifully explained the context of the 1942, taking into account the impact of Gandhi's appeal, do or die. In this regard, I just want to mention here uh, the unfinished novel of Navakanta Burwa. The subject of this novel was, uh, his novel was Kukhalkwar himself. Interestingly, Burwa sir has named uh, this novel as Ohing Harzui, The Fire of Nonviolence. The paradoxical title itself is indicative of the fire that was set ablaze by the revolution led by the nonviolent Gandhi. Thank you so much for your for your insightful analysis. This was uh, from Pranjit Bara, sir. Thank you. Have, okay, sir. Uh, we have one uh, query uh, that, uh, but name is not displayed here. Ma no, it is from Jyoti Katunya. Okay, sir. M. Mahmoud Taibilla has noted that Sri Mosirwala did not have an approval from Gandhiji. That point may be noted. It created many disruption. Yes, yes. Just let me let me explain it because as I told that Hutching says very interesting. Uh, he did a very brilliant job in 1942 himself. Uh, I was supposed to tell it. Uh, I could not tell it because of time constraint. Now let me quote. Uh, later on, Mosirwala described how he was thrown off my guard by no less than a person than Mr. Amri himself. The speech which he made, speech means Amri made, shortly after the arrest of the leaders on August 9, 1942, gave me the first information of the items of a possible program. I was desired to examine that program. I have to say that instead of analyzing the program made known by Mr. Amri by a mere intellectual process, I should have looked for light to the higher guide within me. So there was some kind of a amount of regret on the role he played at that particular point of time. The, yes, later on, Masruwala, he wanted to disassociate. He had a little bit of regret. Did he, did, did he do it with the approval of Gandhi or did it really go with the conscience of Gandhi? But the point is that he did it. And he did it after the lecture of Amri. Amri had given the tem template that this is the way the Congress leaders are going to protest. Oh, it's all the subversive activities. So that template came from Amri. And Masruwala later said that I should have looked for a light to the higher guide within me. But at that point of time, that was the mood of the people. Thank you. Yes, thank you, sir. The second observation from Jyoti Kharunar was that Gandhi told in April 1941 in a letter written, go, uh, written Gopinath, to Gopinath Bordoloi that the Gita was for him the source of inspiration for nonviolence. That point may be taken care of. Uh, that was the basic difference between Gandhi and other leaders. Uh, basically, uh, Hindu tall leaders, uh, both of them, they tried to draw their inspiration from, from Gita. Uh, for Gandhi, uh, Gita was the epitome of inspiration for a nonviolent journey. But the kind of belligerent attitude he took in 1942, he did not endorse violence, but do or die. That spirit of do or die, it was uh, Francis Hutchings in his new book, Gandhi's Battlefield Choice, the Mahatma, the Bhagavad Gita, and World War II. He said there was a little bit of rereading. It was not endorsing violence, but at the same time, the tone was do or die. So it was a little bit of new contextualization happened at the time of the Second World War and might be a little bit of impatience with Gandhi because the way he thought uh, in, uh, the, the British government will be uh, drawing a particular line of certainty that after this particular amount of time, India will be given independence. As that was not coming, there was a little bit of reading. That is the impression reading of Francis Hutchings. So we are just trying to understand how the scholars are trying to do these new readings and rereadings. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Next question is from uh, Pritam Dutta. Based on which evidence government passed order to hang him? As I told you, there was the approver. As on, I got a, the head of Eres Kora Husil, Pisot, 
তখেতে রাজসাক্ষী হবলে রাজি হৈছিল আৰু তেখেতক বিভিন্ন মানে কোয়া মতে তেখেতে বিভিন্ন পলুভন পলুভনৰ পিছত তেওঁ কুখল কৰ আৰু আনকেজনৰ হৈ খাকি দিবলৈ ৰাজি হৈছিল অনলি অন দি বেসিস অফ দ্যাট পার্টিকুলার পারসন হু বিকেম এন এপ্রুভ হৰ এজ এ লেটার পয়েন্ট অফ টাইম দ্যাট দি দ্যাট দি ভার্ডিক্ট ওয়াজ বিং গিভেন ওকে থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার দেন নেক্সট কোয়েরি ইজ ফ্রম ধনমনি কলিতা স্যার ইউ হ্যাভ মেনশনড দ্যাট দ্যাট দেন সেক্রেটারি অফ স্টেট রোড এবাউট সাবভারসিভ অ্যাক্টিভিটিজ টু বি কন্ডাক্টেড বাই দা ইয়েস ইয়েস হ্যালো Hello. Okay, Priti, are you there? Okay, that, uh, Sandana, he, the question is, uh, sir, you have mentioned that, that then the Secretary of State wrote about subversive activities to be conducted by the Congress, and later many leaflets were found, which basically was in line uh, with his uh, writing. So does this indicate that British wish to see violences in the movement? so that they can legitimize their act of you know violence on the people of india in the name of containing the movement no 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 uh, the point is that there was an andhra circular of july 28 uh, uh, there was a captured documents in the andhra circular in july 28 and based on that amri said that that will be the template all over india and there is a very interesting writing uh, few writings which suggest that interestingly amri's statements to bbc and in american public that indian national congress leaders was ready with lots of subversive activities he is suggesting i am saying uh, hatching is suggesting that this inspired the people mostly rather than the indian national congress lead, lead, leaders circular to go for subversive subversive activities it is basically the precursor or the kind of anticipation of Am Am amri which he had declared in detail to the press it is being said that mostly brought in these kind of subversive subversive activities that yes this can be done so this was not connected with that they expected it they wanted it but they anticipated it and that public pronouncement of that anticipation ultimately it worked as a boomerang it inspired the local people to go on huge way in such subversive acts thank you sir uh, next question is from alpana borgohai can you throw some light on the leadership of extremist nationalism in the context of assam and golaghat i was also counting the number of names of freedom fighters that you mentioned and found that you took the names of just two women can you name a few more and highlight the contribution of women uh thank you but it will take a different session altogether by the uh thank you for your question and uh, for your patient hearing to the lecture uh, i thank you uh, obviously women were part of this this uh, but as i told you revolutionary kind of a thing it's difficult for women to be part of that one of course in 1942 there were lots of revolutionary women uh, but at the local level it was difficult and because of which gandhian mode of protest non violent protest was more popular and at it is being acknowledged that it was the gandhi and the space he, he had given that helped for the coming of the women to the public domain and in assam also uh, there were these different kinds of women who partic participate at that particular point of time there are few women's names uh, we can discuss it at a later point of time but by the way dhanyabad so till now we have no more questions i think yeah i think uh... yeah one more maybe this can be the last one and then we can probably okay. end the program yes one more one from me to paidhai can you relate the judgment hanging the great martyr kukhol kwar with the current scenario of defaming the then leader leaders at present i didn't get the question 
can you relate the judgment of hanging the great martyr Kukholkar with the current scenario of uh, defaming the dead leaders at present? Mintu, if, I mean, if you are... Mintu Paita, if you are here, then you can ask it directly to the sir. Uh, to the particular question by Alpana by the by 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 the there's one Dariki Dach, Sohid Hosil Dariki Dach in 1932 civil disobedience mob movement. She died in Sifsagar jail. And she was the first woman murder. Dariki Das in 1932. Uh, then there was another woman. She was Aita Hunualoni. She was arrested in 1932. Then she was placed in Silet jail, and she died there in 1932. There were women named. So uh, Aita Hunualoni, then Darikidas. Darikidas Darik was the first woman martyr in 1932. Okay, I think uh, the. Uh, that's it. I think we don't have any more questions and comments in the chat box. Probably, uh, and then also time is uh, almost one and one and a half hour, probably one hour and thirty minutes. So it's time. So we can call it a day, and then uh, I request Priti to kindly go for the official vote of thanks, and then we will conclude. Okay. Alpana by the way, said Professor Sandan. I am not the asset Professor Sandan. I am associate Professor Sandan. Anyway, thank you. Sound like a professor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, respected directors present here, esteemed faculty members, and all the participants, good evening to you all. It gives me immense pleasure to offer a vote of thanks of this event. First of all, I would like to offer our sincere gratitude to our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Nipendonayan Horma, sir, for his kind presence and inaugural the session. Thank you, sir. I, on behalf of the university, would like to thank uh, today's speaker, Dr. Sondon Kumar Horma sir from Dibrugarh University uh, for, his, uh, for his accepting our request and delivering such, a, such an enlightened uh, lecture. Thank you, sir. We are really grateful to you. I, I hope in future also you will be with us. Uh, then I would like to offer our uh, thanks to the IPCL members for their technical support. And then lastly, but not uh, the least, I would like to offer our sincere gratitude to all the participants who made uh, this event a successful one. Thank you to all once again. Good night to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.